Hello and welcome. My name is Alan and today we're going to talk about a little something different. Something I haven't spoke of before but with the development of a new organization, I think it's time to kind to uh, time to kind of speak on it. I'm speaking of professional wrestling. I know not everybody's a fan, so if you don't enjoy it, you don't have to watch this video. But for me, professional wrestling has a big place in my history. Um, so yeah, I grew up not in the days of the Attitude Era, that was later in my teens. My first exposure to wrestling was in the 80s. You know, exposure to the NWA before it was WCW. Exposure to the AWA. Exposure to GLOW, Gorgeous Ladies of Wrestling. Which now they actually have a Netflix series uh, based upon it, so that's that was kind of interesting to me. But yeah, my father watched wrestling. My grandfather watched wrestling. It, it was always a part of my youth. You know, I remember watching all these legends I was a big fan of Rick Martel before he was the model Rick Martel I always used to enjoy the way he would come off the top rope you know perform the splash Big fans of the Rock and Roll Express. I couldn't stand the Midnight Express. I was like, I've got to beat that Midnight Express. Rock and Roll Express. Come on, Rock and Roll Express. Back in the day. My father, he was a fan of the Four Horsemen. The original Four Horsemen, Ole Anderson, Arn Anderson, Tully Blanchard, Ric Flair. That Four Horsemen. So, yeah. But he was always a Horseman fan. Rooting for the bad guy. Um, of course, the Horseman would go through several incarnations later. But it, that was the original Horseman that he always talked about. I remember James E. Cornette with that tennis racket as a manager. He'd come to the ring with that tennis racket... Have it in his hand. Pop. Pop. You know, managing the Midnight Express. It was, it was wild. It was wrestling back in the days. You had to have wrestlers that were baby faces that could get those pops and you had to have the heels that could get that heat from the fans you wanted heels that could make the fans want to
spit and they just screamed at them and it's rare to see nowadays because of how kayfabe has been broken but oh back in the day there was some crazy crazy reactions it was just wild to watch because the fans would get so riled up over a, a hill or so you'd see such a huge pop for the baby face often they would have the heels winning you know so it still produced that kind of heat you know the baby faces might beat them up but the heels would being champs would walk out of the ring and just get disqualified so they didn't lose the belts or they would win through cheating means they would often win and it maintained that heat it was it was crazy and then of course you had the D monday night wars between wcw and wwe which WWE won, of course. WCW backed out, went bankrupt. WWE bought them, and they eventually bought ECW as well. You saw little pop-ups like TNA and Ring of Honor. Nothing that would really compete with the WWE, though. And I think that's kind of hurt the professional wrestling business. But there's a lot of buzz and talk about AEW. I'm hoping, I really am, I'm hoping it gets enough of a fan base, enough buzz, that it provides the competition we need to see. One of the reasons WWE in, has hurt professional wrestling, there's no other competition. There's TNA, there's Ring of Honor, but it, it doesn't really compete. Back in the day, before the WCW and WWE, you had multiple organizations, multiple regional powers. What was it? Stampede Wrestling in Canada. Um, I think around here there was mid, what was it? Mid South, run by Jim Cornette, out of Knoxville, Tennessee. They kind of ran much of the area around here, but everywhere there was regional powers. And then you had the even bigger corporations, the NWAs, a.k.a. the National Wrestling Alliance, or the AWAs, the American Wrestling Association. They helped provide the competition the variety to make professional wrestling amazing. I mean, fans at the time, you often had to wonder about these dream matches. Who would win, Hogan or Flair? Because they were from competing organizations. And they never went, really went head to head. Even though Flair did wrestle a while in the WWE before he went back to WCW to be their one of their stars. He never, still never really tangled with Hogan. And even though Hogan came over later to the WCW. But before that you had 
you always had to wonder, wow, who who was who's better? The consummate heel in Ric Flair or the big time baby face in Hogan. And I'll be honest with you, I have to say Flair. He had a lot more title runs. A lot more title runs. But yeah, I, I remember the days, you know, Ricky the Dragon Steamboat. Amazing name. Dirty Dutch Mantel. One of, he, he was one of these characters, you just, ah! He's a booker now. That's usually where you'll hear the name Dutch Mantel, but. In the day, he was Dirty Dutch Mantel. Uh, let's see, who else? Um, the Road Warriors. Or the Legion of Doom, however you want to look at them. They were Legion of Doom in the WWE. But I think they was also known as the Road Warriors in other organizations. But it, it was that tag team, Hawk and Animal, that would always get in the ring and just dismantle. They would destroy you. They would run to the ring, pulling off those sh spiky shoulder pads and just get in the ring and... <clears throat> The Steiner Brothers were another great tag team. Rick and Scott Steiner. Nah. I mean, this was still the days before the high-flying Mexican wrestling that became a part of American wrestling. This this is when move knowing move set mattered. Knowing how to wrestle mattered. You just didn't do story angles for 45 minutes on WWE like they do now. I hear so often it's it's 45 minutes of just Mike work on the WWE in the first hour anymore. No. Get back to the roots. Honestly. Pro Res Wrestling Illustrated, yes, there was wrestling magazines, used to rank the top 10 or 20 wrestlers of all organizations for that week. So you'd often see a mix and match of who was better. Now, I don't even think there's rhyme or reason to who they put in their lists. I really hope AEW provides some competition to the uh, for the, for the fans to turn to besides WWE because WWE has allowed wrestling to just go <whistles> it's sad it really is sad <sighs> I, I remember watching Barry Windham. You know, Dirty Dick Slater. Uh, 
that these were heels before they got into WWE that could really pick up some heat. And again, that, that heat that you make the crowd want to, you suck! Boo! You know, that, that, that kind of reaction. They would have scaffolding matches, lariat matches. It was just all wild. With the Monday Night Wars, with WWE's, or with Ted Turner's purchase of um, NWA Southeast to become WCW. It made two giant and two wealthy organizations go head to head. Boom, boom, boom. And it was an interesting time. It, re it really was. The WWE wasn't the power... That it became. It was a regional organization up in the Northeast. But Vince's technique of stealing wrestlers and paying them. Buku money Just by by stealing talent to pay them Buku money, lure them in a way, really changed the game because it hurt a lot of the organizations. And it gave the WWE who was in the WWF more power. But and like I said, then came the Monday Night Wars. WCW versus WWF. Now WWE. Um, that is a little more well known. The Monday Night Wars. Of course, WCW originally... Uh, it would go back and forth, but WCW would start losing because the WWE actually pushed and started the Attitude Era. And that really changed things, I think, for them. That was their heyday, honestly. Even though they're still around, were the only game for the longest time. But I think the Attitude Era really changed... WWE wrestling. It was the Attitude Era and just after Attitude. Now it's it's went from PG-13 back down to G ratings. You can't. You can't run a good show like that. I know you want to birth more fans, but going at a G rating will not do it for you. Many people would argue PG wouldn't do it for you. I would have to say PG 13. Have. And, you know, it's at that slot when parents can, should be, they don't all, they're not always able to, but they should be sitting with their kids and kind of explaining things with them. You know, like I said, I sat with my father. Sometimes I would sit on the couch with my grandfather because he'd be watching wrestling. I remember it on that big 
uh, CRT, big old fat floor model television. We'd watch it at our own home. I'd watch it with my dad. We'd watch wrestling. But yeah, after WCW and even ECW went away... Rest, professional wrestling has went downhill. It was good for a few years. Personally, I watched wrestling up until the death and murders, uh, the, the suicide and murders of Benoit and the Benoit family. I was a huge Chris Benoit fan. I mean, he just... Wasn't much work on the mic. He just cracked you open. And then the murders happened. I don't hate Chris Benoit. Many people do. I don't hate them. And in fact, I still adore how well he worked as a wrestler. I don't condone what happened. It saddens me greatly. I mean, he killed his wife and son and then committed suicide. Now, there's a lot of evidence that he could have been suffering a lot of brain damage because, unfortunately, one of his finishing moves was the flying headbutt. He'd get up on the top rope and jump off headbutting you from the top rope while you're on the mat, so it's like... don't care who you are, repeated instances of that are going to have their effect because wrestling was not only Thursday and Monday nights. You had house shows. I think there was a Saturday show. It was either Saturday or Sunday. So... You know, these, it's just repeated trauma to the brain that has been shown over and over and over. And there was also suspect that he was having to take steroids or pain pills, which is often something that's not looked at enough in wrestling because there are other wrestlers who have had to take who have been on steroids who have been on like pain pills we've seen it before other wrestlers who have passed away and they do blood work and find yeah they had prescriptions for pain pills they had it in their body it's it it, it isn't easy work Again, I don't condone it, but it does sadden me greatly, being a former fan. And that, after that happened, I kind of fell off wrestling. I mean, I'd watch it from time to time, but I just kind of fell off. It It hurt. 
to see someone so good who didn't really have to rely on mic work. It was just in-ring ability. But to see that happen, to that would that destroyed lives. <sighs> yeah, it, it hurt. It really did hurt. So, yeah, I kind of fell off wrestling. I'd watch it from time to time. But, yeah. Um, and then finally... I haven't watched wrestling. It's been a few years since I've watched any wrestling. I've been watching some of the clips on WrestleMania or Walk Culture Cultaholic because of the recent buildup of AEW. I'm kind of hoping it will. provide a true choice for fans. Um, yeah. I even watched uh, the Cornet Experience, one of the, one of the more recent Cornet Experience um, podcast on YouTube to uh, listen to his opinion on AC AEW's Double or Nothing. Because here recently, there's just been a lot of buzz. You haven't given, you haven't seen a lot of critical identification of it. And I trust Cornette to give critical identification. He, he, <laughs> a lot of people don't like the man, but he tell you what what he thinks. That that's for damn sure. He'll tell you what he thinks. And he pointed out a lot he disliked, but he said, "Yeah, it did. It does have some good points." So hopefully, hopefully, it could provide an actual alternative to the WWE. Because we need it right now. Monopolies, trusts, on anything are always bad. And in this case... Basically, WWE monopolizing the market. I mean, you still got TNA and Ring of Honor. It's hard to watch anything like New Japan because it's not always on TV. But yeah, it's been WWE monopolizing it and it's really hurting the business. Hopefully, AEW is actually halfway decent. I mean, they picked up some big-name stars, and they seem to be relying more on wrestling ability than they are mic work, which I think may help them. So, we, we will see. But I just kind of wanted to go over the condition in wrestling since, you know, we're seeing the birth of AEW. 
Hopefully they stick around. And force WWE to up their game. But anyway. As always. Educate thyself. Think, read, study and learn, people. It's always about what you know that can help you. Uh, I'll see you all again in the next video. But until then, later.